What's good, everybody? Welcome to Part Timers Barbecue. I'm Max, the Part Time Pit Master. And on today's episode, we're going to be doing a whole chicken. We're going to be hanging it on the pit barrel. But first, we've got to make up a brine and get this bird brined. Let's get into it. how we're gonna make this simple, super simple brine. I got a half a cup of uh, kosher salt, half a cup of brown sugar. That's going in there. All right, now we're gonna grab some boiling water. It's already, it's been boiled. We're gonna put just enough in there so we can dissolve. Okay, so now that we got the sugar and the salt dissolved, we're gonna actually get some cold water. So what the brine's gonna do, what the brine's gonna do is the salts and the sugars, as the chicken sits in there, it's gonna break down the protein inside of the meat which is gonna one, allow it to infuse more flavor and accept more flavor. It'll make it more tender and it's gonna be able to retain more moisture throughout the cook. So it's actually very beneficial. So now we're gonna throw in some chicken broth. Go with the chicken flavor. Open. All right, now we're gonna open. So we're just gonna put some of that in there. And then couple squirts of hot sauce, just for a little vinegar in there. Mix that around. You're gonna see it is cool, or cold I should say, so it's ready to put it on the chicken. Okay, so I have this chicken. I have the Ziploc bag and this container lid, just in case it leaks. I'm hoping I'm gonna fit this chicken into this bag because I don't really have a container that's big enough to hold it. So we'll see. But then we're gonna pour the brine over the chicken. So let's get this chicken out of the package. Decent sized bird. Just got it at the local grocery store. I'm gonna take the, the string off because I don't really want it on there. Not too much to trim off, so just take off these little pockets of fat here. Part of the fat there. Other than that, we're not gonna do too much. We're not gonna spatchcock it. I'm gonna leave it whole. I'm gonna season it up with my barky briskets in the morning and let it sit through the afternoon like that. I'm gonna put two hooks through it and we're gonna hang it. So other than that, nothing left to do but try to get it in this bag. Notice how I fold the sides down. So that way when I'm touching, I'm touching what's gonna be on the inside of the Ziploc bag and I'm not actually, actually contaminating the outside of the bag. Would you look at that? We got lucky and it fit. Perfect. Remove one of these. We're gonna take our brine. Give it one last stir for good luck. Now we're just gonna pour it over the, the chicken. You want the chicken to be completely submerged. Make sure that, oh geez. Brian is gonna get inside and touch all the meat. Close it up. I already spilled them in a little bit of a mess, but it's not too bad. Squeeze out some of the air. And there we go. I touched it with this glove, so I'm gonna wipe it down with a Lysol wipe because accidents happen. All right, next time you see me, I'm gonna be taking this bird out of the brine, um, and then we're gonna dry off the skin, oil it up, and let it sit open in the fridge for the skin to actually dry up. So yeah, see you at that point. 
time to season this bird up. My daughter, Baby Q, decided to make a cameo. So we're gonna start by patting off any excess brine that we have on the chicken. I'm gonna use Pam Butter Spray just as a binder, just to help those seasonings stick better, especially since we just dried off the skin. So we're gonna make sure we hit the backside. Very generous application. We're trying to get this skin nice and flavored up. Don't forget to get inside the cavity. Always remember your cavity, folks. Season the top part now. Make sure you get under the wings, the sides, the legs. Now we're gonna take our hooks. We're gonna try to get them through the thick part of the breast and under the wing. This is gonna give us some extra strength. Right through there, we're going with two hooks. And now this is gonna sit in the fridge uncovered for the seasoning to dry out the skin before we put it on. So we got the chimney fired up. It's uh, getting real nice and hot. We're gonna get ready to pour it into the charcoal basket with some cherry chunks in there using lumberjack premium lump charcoal and then uh, then we'll let the barrel warm up and once the barrel's warmed up we're gonna throw the chickens on so let's do it so smokes rolling it is hot so we're about to throw this chicken onto the pit I'm using another hook as one of these so I can put it in. Okay, so we got that in there. Nothing left to do but let it cook. So I just want to take a few seconds to talk about how much I really love this cooker and a couple of things that I love about it and why. First of all, there's no temperature gauge on this. So it's really like get back to basics, no frills cooking, which I love. So it's got one vent down at the bottom, which is its intake vent. And then these rebar holes regulate the temp. As you can see, we got a nice light smoke coming out of there. Um, so what I love about it is it runs around a little hotter than most people are used to. It runs around 275, 325 in that range. You just kind of let it do its thing, man. There's ways to manipulate it a bit, but I usually just touch it like it's hot to the fingertips. I know it's cooking. I know we're good. The other thing I love about it is the direct heat cooking, the no cover directly over the coals. I somewhat offset it how I build the coals up where I put the hot coals on one side and I usually keep the proteins uh, opposite of that, but you're still direct underneath it. You still get those juices dripping down and just uh, flavor. And then as they fall down, they steam up and add another layer of flavor to the meat. So it's honestly, it's an awesome cooker. If you're thinking about purchasing it, in my opinion, I would go for it. I'm not sponsored by them in any sort of way, but I just really, I really love this cooker. Well, we're about 45 minutes into this cook. I melted down some butter and uh, added my chicken and rib rub to it. So this is what we're gonna mop the chicken with. We're gonna check the temperature and rotate it so it gets even cooking. Good. So we're at 134, which is perfect. Alright, now let's 
cover it up and let it keep cooking. In some tin foil. We're not eating it for a little bit now anyway. So I'm just gonna put it in here, put it in my oven, set at 155. I'll grab these juices, pour them in there. I'm just gonna let it sit at 155 in the oven until I'm ready to slice it up for dinner. Also just gonna grab some of this butter. I'm just gonna pour it in the bottom. Wrap it up and let it come down in temperature a bit so it's been sitting out so it won't be too hot. We're just going to wrap it up like that. Now the chicken's been resting longer than you need to so in normal circumstances 15 minute rest would be perfect. I'm going to take this out and oh, look how juicy it is. Dripping everywhere. Uh, I'm going to start by removing these legs and thighs. And then we're going to go in for the bite. Move this aside. All right, let's see how it tastes. Color's amazing. You know there's gonna be maximum flavor in that skin split right there. Let's dig in. Dripping, juicy, flavorful, tender. That's awesome.